This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening. I'm Sabrina Brown. Thank you for joining us. The Coalition of Concerned Citizens held a town meeting last night at the Grand Bahama Taxi Union building on the issue of the Grand Bahama Power Company's rate adjustment request to its regulator, the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Kimberly Mullings was there. The Grand Bahama Taxi Union Hall is filled with residents who are against any rate adjustment that can result in an increase in the cost of electricity put forth by the Grand Bahama Power Company to its regulator. However, it was announced that the power company declined the coalition's invitation to participate in the town meeting. To date, the coalition has met with the regulator three times on the issue. Coalition member Kirk Russell. I believe from attending those meetings that the safest business that anyone can go into in this Bahama land is to own a power company in Grand Bahama. That's the safest business. Member Darren Brooks says a possible rate increase will prove to be not good for Grand Bahamians, causing a negative domino effect. The food store, when I looked at it, he has to run lights. He has to run the coolers for the cold cuts. He has to run the freezers for the meat. And he has to run air conditioning to keep people cool. Wouldn't he have to go up on the prices of the things? Or start firing payments? We don't want that. Enough people in Grand Bahama already don't have a job. The Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darville, could not attend Monday night's meeting, but convener of the coalition, Pastor Eddie Victor, shared information he says he received from Minister Darville on how the Bahamian government, the Bahamas Electricity Corporation, and Power Secure plans to reduce electricity rates throughout the nation. Next year, the base rate is going to be, they're looking at about 17 cents per kilowatt. The following year, it drops to 15. The next year it drops to 14. That's across the Bahamas. All right, but in Grand Bahama now, 216 to 218, 22 cents per kilowatt hour on an average, which 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 we are told by Paul Miller at the Chamber of Commerce luncheon that there will be an increase of 3.7 percent. Residents also shared their concerns at the town meeting. Is it legal to refuse power when there's only one power supply here? I would like to ask Sarah and George, do the Port Authority have any shares in the power company? Is that a conflict of interest if they do have shares in the company? If we would decide that for one month we're not going to pay the power company, we will affect their pocket. Don't think because they're a big multi-million dollar corporation that you cannot come up against them because the Canadians fought them in court and they won. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. During last night's town meeting, the Coalition of Concerned Citizens officially launched its latest campaign and protest against an increase in the rates of electricity on Grand Bahama. Today, hundreds of residents joined that crusade. Residents from throughout Grand Bahama gathered downtown Tuesday afternoon to protest a request by the Grand Bahama Power Company to its regulator, the Grand Bahama Port Authority, for a rate increase. Residents signed copies of a letter addressed to the chairman of the regulatory committee, Sarah St. George, stating that they oppose the rate application by the power company. The letter also states that there should be no increase in base electricity rates through December 2018 and that the committee find ways to reduce electricity rates on the island. Our coalition message has been consistent. We, uh, our campaign was to lower the cost of power. So when you're talking about increasing power um, during a time when the economy is in the state that it is, when global oil prices are down, um, we realize that we have to send a clear message to the regulator, um, uh, the Grand Bahama Port Authority, and the message coming from the people of the island. Convener of the group, Pastor Eddie Victor, then led a peaceful march to the Grand Bahama Port Authority where the letters were delivered. He says in just a few hours, over 500 people had signed letters. People got excited about um, um, signing their letter, 
um, um, from, from last night to this morning, uh, uh, people all over. I mean, in the banks, in the schools. Uh, we just got some uh, letters that came from the uh, Rand Memorial. Uh, the, the, the people of Grand Bahama united on this issue, that, that there, there cannot be any further increase in the base rate of electricity. He expressed this concern. One of the sad facts about this whole uh, rate application was that there was no economic study done, no survey done, neither by the Grand Bahama, Port uh, Grand Bahama Port Authority, the regulator, and also there was no study done by the Grand Bahama um, Power Company, Mira. So, so here it is, you're going to make a decision on the economic life of people and businesses, and um, you're going to expect them to pay additional rates, which would mean uh, millions of dollars coming out of the economy into one company's um, bank account. Now we spoke with the chairman of the regulatory committee of the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Sarah St. George, moments ago. She said they welcome feedback from customers and the recommendations will be taken into consideration. She said come January 1st, senior citizens and lower income residents who represent 40% of residential customers will see a 5% decrease in their power bills, while 85% of those customers will see no change or a decrease in their power bills. She added that the current levels of electricity rates will remain the same or decrease over the next three years. In other news, one of the leading gaming agencies on Grand Bahama, which was granted a provisional license by the government, recently held the first in a series of seminars in keeping with policies which governs this historic industry. Joan Davis Roll reports. He's among the country's foremost experts when it comes to tackling those serious issues which plague our nation. Everything from crime to substance abuse to mental illness. Now that the country has given birth to a new industry, Dr. David Allen of the Nassau-based Allen Institute is charting new waters and providing expert assistance to those who suffer from gambling addiction. In a groundbreaking move, Chief Executive Officer of Jarrell Investments and Chances Gaming here on Grand Bahama, Raymond R. H. Coma, held a one-day symposium designed to educate the company's executives about the dreaded illness. If I um, pursue Dr. Allen, who is a um, noted psychologist in the Bahamas, um, to um, partner with him to um, satisfy um, the gaming board's uh, uh, mandate on um, responsible gaming. Um, we, uh, it, we also share their concern with that. Um, I've been in this business now, as, as I said, um, like 23 years, and I've seen the good and the bad. And um, it's very important that we treat the bad. According to Dr. Allen, the struggle is real for many persons who find themselves addicted to playing numbers and the domino effect it could have on families and society. This is the first formalized confidential training program dealing with gambling uh, by my institute. Although throughout the years <clears throat> in Nassau and America, you know, I have people come to see me from different parts of the world and a number of them have gambling or other addiction issues. And so our challenge as an institute is to provide help for people. Gambling addiction is a very uh, subtle and difficult addiction. It happens very gradually, but when it does take over, it can destroy families, destroy jobs, and can also destroy people. What people don't know is that um, men start earlier, women start a little later, but when they get going, they can become a more compulsive gambler than men. And so a number of ladies who have treated <coughs> it's really hard because their children uh, suffer deeply. John Davis Roll, ZNS Network News. The annual Remembrance Day March and service held on Grand Bahama this past Sunday in honor of persons who gave service during the time of war. Italia Hall reports. Many coming together on Sunday for Remembrance Day. The event began with a parade from the Christ the King Church where many schools and organizations came together and marched to the Mary Star of the Sea Church for the 53rd Remembrance Day service. Father David Cooper conducted the service and pointed to the importance of peace and remembering those who served in the protection of freedom around the world. If we, foot soldiers of the Lord, might govern our words, might speak conscientiously to the good in one another, 
there will be no more wars. If we can look each other in the eye and see a reflection of God's image, God's likeness, the possibilities of their giftedness, then we will disagree with people's ideologies and not with their personhood. Father Cooper adding that there is a coming day when God will send his son to reclaim the world. In his reclamation of the world, he will sift through good and evil. This second return will be a return for judgment, for salvation of the just and condemnation of the unjust. There were several song selections by the choir as many joined along. The Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darville, and the Assistant Commissioner of Police, Emmerich Seymour, amongst others, laying wreaths at the altar in memory of those who have served in World Wars I and II. Members of the Royal Bahamas Police Force performed a demonstration, and prayers were then lifted up. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. Stay with us, there's more news after this.